the most loyal subject of the Queen, the most vocal critic of her government. No Prime Minister ever needed to ask what Ian Paisley thought about closer ties to Dublin. Never! 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 When Margaret Thatcher signed the Anglo-Irish Agreement, he branded her a traitor. His quest to keep Northern Ireland British had already earned him both a following and a reputation. And he was thrown there, you right. saw it. And they, they, these red cars. What are you doing with that man? Here, here. What are you doing? It was there by faith I he was leader of the Democratic Unionist Party and the moderator of the Free Presbyterian Church. When the Pope visited the European Parliament, he denounced him as the Antichrist. How much I... Mr Paisley, I now exclude you from this house and for the remainder of the city. He rejected the Good Friday Agreement and resisted Sinn Féin's participation in government. His party had no desire to sit down with the political wing of the IRA. There must be a complete doing away with terrorism, with criminal activities, and there must be absolute support for the police. Let them fulfil that. When the IRA did decommission its weapons, Ian Paisley crossed the political Rubicon. He shared power with Martin McGuinness. President Bush had to see it to believe it. Historians are going to have a real battle to work out what to do and what to say about Ian Paisley. You had 50 years of his campaign of negativity, of saying no, of being a rejectionist, of saying we don't want a deal. A deal would be dangerous, it would deliver us into the hands of our enemies. But that 50 years was followed by five years of saying, let's do peace, let's do friendship, let's make a deal with Sinn Féin and the IRA. <laughs> Married to Eileen for more than half a century, he described her as his chief of staff. Criticism of the big man bothered her much more than it bothered him. I have a hide like a rhinoceros and it, it doesn't affect me at all. I have tried to be absolutely honest. And I believe that has been the secret of my success, just being myself and being honest with people. He said he'd never trust the IRA, never make peace with Republicans, never engage with Dublin. For the protester turned peacemaker, there can only be one epitaph. Never say never. David Blevins, Sky News, Belfast.